Welcome back to the channel and another broadcast. Today we are in the 10th chapter of Ecclesiastes. I do so trust my listeners are well, rejoicing in truth, walking in holiness, righteousness and goodness through the blood of the Lord Jesus, the power of the Spirit of God. Everything is most excellent here. Um, it's, a, it's a lovely uh, sunny day here today. So, the times we live in, friends, it's very important to stay in the scriptures. Uh, last night we was in the scriptures till eleven thirty, just a handful of us. Uh, we have recently begun the book of Isaiah. Uh, we're currently uh, we did Isaiah six, where King Uzziah um, had just died, and uh, Isaiah Yeshua who sees Jehovah high and lifted up upon his throne, and the train of his glory fills the temple. And uh, Isaiah says, warm to me, I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. Mine eyes have seen the king, Jehovah of hosts. So the first thing Isaiah was concerned about was his speech. His speech. Very important that we speak kindly and wisely and truly, friends. A wise man once said nothing. It's a great thing, friends, to have... Uh, a guard set it at the door of your lips and to speak wisely and kindly and truly and graciously. Uh, and also, uh, having just completed the previous night, the book of Proverbs, all 31 chapters, and of course on this very channel there's an entire playlist on the whole book of Proverbs and the whole book of Isaiah, we started uh, Psalms, we, we completed Psalm 2, so we're going through the entire book of Isaiah and Psalms in tandem, one or two chapters from each, each evening. And so uh, I would commend to any of my listeners that you uh, always be in the process of systematically going through books of Scripture. If you've got the time, uh, two books of Scripture uh, at any given point, from start to finish, beginning the first chapter, and don't overcook the goose, you know, don't uh, uh, see it as a logistical exercise or a religious thing. Do you understand? It's to get some substance and some truth for your lives, for your, for your hearts and your minds, to give you comfort and encouragement in the sovereignty and loving kindness of Elohim, the King of Israel, the Melech Hamai, the King of Peoples, the Melech Hakavod, the King of Glory. The Elohim Hakavod, the God of glory. The Adonai Hakavod. The Lord of glory. Ecclesiastes, the tenth. Dead flies cause the ointments of the apothecary to stink and ferment. So a little foolishness is weightier than V's deem and honour. The hit of a wise man is at his right hand, but a fool's hit is at his left. Yea, also when he that is a fool walketh by the way, his sense fails him, and he says to everyone that he is a fool. If the spirit of the ruler rise up against thee, leave not thy place, for quietness pacifieth great offences. There is an evil that I've seen under the sun, as an error that proceedeth from the ruler. Folly is set in great dignities, but the rich sit in a low place. I have seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. He that diggeth a pit falleth into it, and whoso breaketh down a hedge, a serpent biteth him. Whoso removeth stones is hurt therewith. He that cleaveth wood is endangered thereby. If the iron be blunt and one do not wet the edge, then must he apply more strength. But wisdom is profitable to give success. If the serpent bite before enchantment, then the charmer hath no advantage. 
the words of a wise man's mouth are gracious, but the lips of a fool swallow up himself. The beginning of the words of his mouth is foolishness, and the end of his talk is mischievous madness. And the fool multiplieth words, yet man knoweth not what shall be, and what shall be after him, who will tell him? The labour of fools wearieth them, because they know not how to go to the city. Woe to thee, O earth, when thy king is a child, and thy princes eat in the morning. Happy art thou, O land, when thy king is a son of nobles, and thy princes eat in due sea song, a strength and not a drunkenness. By much slothfulness the framework falleth in, and through idleness of the hands the house drippeth. A feast is made for laughter, and wine maketh life merry, but money answereth everything. Curse not the king, nor not in thy thought, and curse not the rich in thy bedchamber, for the bird of the air will carry the voice, and that which hath wings will tell the matter. Dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary to stink and ferment. So an apothecary is like a chemist's place where he would get different lotions and portions to treat any bodily ailments. And uh, certainly in the Middle East, there would be a lot more, a lot bigger and a lot more uh, diseased flies, flies carrying different uh, diseases. Um, and, and so this book, of course, was written in a much hotter country than, than Great Britain, the Middle East. And so it would be more common for to have more uh, dead flies uh, there. And what it's saying is if they went to go to the ointment to use it on someone and there was a dead fly in it, it was, you know, uh, it, it wasn't a nice thing to see and it would hinder the usage and treatment. Um, and really, it's a little bit like you can drink from muddy waters. Uh, it probably won't kill you, but it'll make you quite ill. And so it's, uh, you know, if it's really the devil is the dead fly. The devil has lost his immortality. He's lost his wisdom. He's lost his beauty. Uh, the doomed, deluded demon is the dead fly. Um, and... Uh, you know, you don't want any of the devil in your Christianity, friends. You know, so the prime thing is don't have any doctrinal hobby horses. Stay with scripture, friends. I'm quite sure there's probably someone listened to this that, that's got a couple of doctrinal hobby horses that are not clearly explaining scripture, but they won't let them go. You know, it's pride and arrogance and idolatry. If, if you can't clearly see something in the sacred page, friends, then you ought to let it go. If, if it was that needful to, to, to be held to, to the point of division, then God would have put it in the scripture. So, a word to the wise friends, if you've got doctrinal hobby horses uh, that other Christians are not happy to ride, you probably need to let it go and get back to what the scripture says. If you're not sure what to believe, friends, believe the scripture. Don't set up idolatrous notions of your own about this, that, or the other around Christianity, friends. It can be a dead fly in the ointment, and it will hinder your effectiveness in the gospel of the Son of God. Indeed, if you've been unsuccessful in the gospel of the Son of God, friends, it's very often because you've got doctrines that are not clearly in scripture sectarian doctrines a little foolishness is weightier than wisdom and honour so your effectiveness as a human being is hindered by the influence of the devil by dead flies 
and the result is foolishness, which can be problematic in your in your circumstances and experiences, friends. Now this next verse, the heart of the wise at his right hand and the fools at his left, is the reason why for centuries ago in Britain, children would be forced to use their right hand to write with anyone that, that wrote, chose to write with their left hand would be put up and punished or vilified. And it would be for this scripture here. And it's an interesting scripture. And I think it rather simply means um, uh, that, that given that most human beings by far uh, are more uh, uh, agile and adept and deft with their right hand than they are with their left. Um, and so this verse is simply saying that in the round, uh, someone that's wise uses their right hand because if they were to use their left, they'd be less uh, adept, less skillful with their left hand. Uh, and so by nature of the fact that most human beings are more deft with their right hand, uh, it would be unwise to use your left hand uh, to do things. Um, but certainly it's not true to say that, that, that just because somebody is, is more deaf with the left hand, there's any problem with that whatsoever. It's just an interesting anomaly. When he that is a fool walks by the way, his sense fails him, and he says to everyone that he is a fool. Interesting verse, friends. If the spirit of the ruler rise up against you, leave not your place, quietness pacifieth great offences. There's an evil that I've seen under the sun, there's an error that proceedeth from the ruler. Foolishness is set in great dignities. Yes. Yes, the wicked European politicians and the the secret ambitions of the European politicians has been to erode national identity and national sovereignty in France and Spain in Italy and Britain in Ireland and their principal tool to do this is mass migration of Africans and Asians that's how they've been doing it these last 25 years friends mass migration uh, and it is to try and push forward the Kalergi plan K-A-L-E-R-G-I the European uh, politicians they want the united states of europe they want to centralize power and authority uh, economically politically and militarily uh, and geopolitically in every way from the, the european union um, and uh, not only do they have a bottom-up policy of flooding all european nations with vast swaths uh, of mainly uh, asian african men um, but the top-down policy is to install uh, foreign Muslim men and women and women uh, in places of authority. We've had a Muslim, Asian Muslim mayor in London now for I think it's over eight years. It's the most preposterous thing. We recently managed to get rid of a a Muslim, an Asian Muslim man called Hamza Yousaf, a wicked man. Uh, who was made the first minister of Scotland. <laughs> Completely preposterous. Uh, and I see that we had a Welsh, a, a Pakistani Welsh first minister. He's just resigned. Or, like, yeah, he's resigned a few days ago. Uh, and, of course, we've just had Rishi Sunak, uh, who, who is an Asian Hindu, as the prime minister of Great Britain, you know. Um, and uh, and what else? I see that the Labour representative for Scotland is also a Pakistani. You know, complete insanity. No one's against these persons being safe and well or being in Britain. That is not my point. My point is that Great Britain is a person of Caucasian persons of British ancestry. And persons of Caucasian British ancestry should be the persons in political places of power, period. That's how it should be. See, so, so, so the, the reason for this 
is wicked globalist elite politicians and they're all millionaires these politicians they're all greedy and corrupt and they all know what the uh, the plan is it's the erosion of national identity and national sovereignty with a view to incorporation uh, and economic greed and gain uh, the centralization and insular nature of power uh, top-down politics uh, with a view to the European Union um, and their primary to bottom-up mass migration uh, of male Asians and Africans and a top-down policy of, of installing uh, foreign Asian Africans uh, into places of power and influence, as, a, as I've just briefly described. And not only that, sexual perverts, the, the loony, feckless, flip-flopping left uh, Leo Varadkar, a sexual pervert, was was prime minister for years in Ireland. Uh, we've got Emmanuel Macron. His his wife is a man. Um, his wife is actually a man. Uh, Barack Obama. His wife is actually a man. Uh, and uh, the, the the globalist elites they laugh at the common people because they think most people don't know, and that is the case. Most people don't know these simple realities. Um, mercifully at the last election a few weeks ago the SNP, the Scottish Nationalist Party took a real drubbing and lost I think they lost two thirds of their seats they now down to five seats in the UK Parliament wonderful and that's because of their gender bender agenda and the proliferation of sexual perversion and teaching wickedness to little children in Scottish schools uh, and installing a foreign Muslim uh, as First Minister of Scotland. So they've been duly punished and dealt with by Jehovah Elohim. And now, of course, the SNP leader in Scotland, a man called John Swiney. He's overseeing this. Uh, he, he was uh, the First Minister that oversaw the loss of two-thirds of their seats. So that's that's one present current application of this. Error proceeding from the ruler. Foolishness is set in great dignities. These principles are the cause celebrities of uh, the rich and the influential globalists. They all think it's wonderful to proliferate sexual perversion, to erode national sovereignty and national identity, to erode traditional Christian values. But what they don't realise is that the Lord Jesus Christ rules the whole creation, that all human beings are like grasshoppers, that Jehovah Elohim rules the whole planet. There is neither counsel, purpose, nor understanding against the Lord Jehovah Elohim, the God of Israel, friends. Jehovah rules all things. He that digs a pit falls into it. Well, that's the devil, you see. The devil dug the pit when he lied to the first woman and, and said, you'll be all right. You'll become like God if you take the knowledge of evil. You'll be fine. You won't die. God's, God's lying. God's a liar. God's lying to you. Uh, you won't die. You, in fact, you'll become like God uh, and you'll live forever. You'll be fine. See, so the devil dug the pit. Uh, whoever breaks down a hedge, which is what that woman did, she broke down the hedge of protection. The serpent biteth him. So if you if you break down a hedge, a serpent bites you. And of course, uh, remember these uh, prob these well these proverbial uh, scriptures were written uh, by King Solomon. He wrote he's quite prolific in his scripture writing, Song of Songs, Ecclesiastes, and the entire virtually the entire book of Proverbs. And some of the Psalms, um, he was a great king in the Middle East, in, in Israel, which is a very hot country. And so it would be quite common that if he was an arable farm worker, that you would come across snakes. See, so if you if you had to break down a hedge, you know, to unify some fields, or uh, that, that you'd discover a snake there that might bite you. 
you know, and spiritually, if you if you cross a hedge of protection that God has put around you, if you choose sin and wickedness, it's it's quite possible that the devil might bite you. You see. Whoever removes stones is hurt therewith. He that cleaves wood is endangered thereby. So the cleaving of wood in the scripture has to do with culpability for the death of Christ, the making of the cross. Removing stones means changing that which is established, not choosing the ancient paths. A stone is impenetrable, unmoving and unchanging, the rock of ages. If the iron be blunt and one do not wet the edge, then must he apply more strength. But wisdom is profitable to give success. Yes, the words of a wise man's mouth are gracious. The lips of the righteous always know what is acceptable. Jehovah giveth grace. His grace is sufficient, friends, for us. Grace and peace. The lips of a fool swallow up himself. The beginning of the words of his mouth is folly and the end of his talk is mischievous madness. The fool multiplieth words, yet man knoweth not what shall be, and what shall be after him, who will tell him? The labour of fools wearieth them, because they know not how to go to the city. So you have this comparison between the wise and the foolish, which is very often the language of the Proverbs. The labour of fools wearieth them, because they know not how to go to the city. Get wisdom, get intelligence, get understanding. Happy art thou, O land, when thy king is the son of nobles, and thy princes eat in due season. For strength and not for drunkenness. War to you, O land, when your king is a child and your princes eat in the morning. So there was times in the history of Israel where the king was a child. Not very often. But it does happen. Not so much in modern history, although kings are different in modern history. But when I say, I suppose when I say modern history, I mean the last sort of 200 years. But occasionally it does happen. And when the king is a child, of course, there, there are persons that, that guide the governance of the city or the country. Um, so, you know, if a, if a king is irresponsible, if a king is unwise, uh, then that's a problem for the whole nation. And if your princes eat in the morning, uh, what that means is if they eat in the morning, they're more likely to be drunk by noon. Uh, or to start getting drunk at noon. Sobriety is a wonderful thing, friends. Um, happy art thou, O land, when thy king is a son of nobles. So that really speaks of Christ Jesus being God incarnate, being the only begotten son of God. By much slothfulness, the framework falls in. So in other words, your bodies, you know, they change shape and people get fat and unseemly through laziness. Uh, and, and through the idleness of the hands, the house trippeth. A feast is made for laughter. Wine maketh life merry, but money answers everything. Do not curse the king. No, not in your thought. Curse not the rich in thy bedchamber. The bird of the air will carry the voice, and that which hath wings will tell the matter. So it tells you there's something very interesting, some great doctrine. And of course, this is Ecclesiastes 10, 20. It tells you about your secret thoughts, friends. Uh, many of the thoughts in a person's heart, but the counsel of the Lord Jehovah that doth stand. I am he that searches hearts and minds, says Christ Jesus. Jehovah knows the hearts and minds of mortals. Jehovah is the source of all mental, physical, emotional, spiritual power. Uh, the minds and the words of mortals are exactly that, of minor consequence. Jehovah sits atop the flood. Jehovah is king over all this earth. Jehovah Elohim rules the whole planet, friends, not mortals, not devils, not armies, not the police, but Jehovah. All things are entirely subject 
So this verse tells you, don't have secret uh, evil thoughts towards the king, towards Jesus, or towards rich humans, it says. Because the bird of the air will carry the voice, and that which hath wings will tell the matter. Very interesting. It's, all, it's, it's a statement that somehow mysteriously, the birds of the air will carry the voice. If you think, friends, of all the evil things that humans have said, all the evil things humans have said about the Lord Jesus Christ, all the evil things that humans have said about each other, all the evil things that humans have said about governments and institutions, principles. God knows, God requires that which is past. By a man's words shall a man be justified. By a man's words will a man be condemned. With the heart men believe to righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made to salvation. If you confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe that God has risen him from the dead, then thou shalt be saved. So it's the most interesting and unusual verse, friends, and I believe quite unique in terms of creatures carrying uh, what humans say and what they think. If you look at the verse, you've got cursing the king in your thoughts, and when it says, curse not the rich in your bedchamber, I rather think that has in view voice, audible cursing. So when people say bad things about the humans or think bad things, somehow it tells us here the bird will carry the voice and that which hath wings will tell the matter. Very, very interesting. Basically, friends, be vigilant, bring every thought subject into captivity to the Lord Jesus Christ through the energy of the Holy Spirit and the mind and the heart and the goodness of God. Well, friends, we'll be back soon with another podcast. Stay strong in the scriptures under the blood in the spirit. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Great shalom. That's health, well-being, peace and prosperity of those that love the Torah, of Yahweh, the Lord, the Lord. Nothing causes them to stumble. Shalom, shalom, family. Baruch Hava Hashem Adonai Yehovah Elohim. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of Adonai Yehovah Elohim. The Rivon HaOlamin, the sovereign of the universe. Haruak Vehakala Omrim Bo Adonai Yeshua Hamashiach. Haruak Vehakala Omrim Bo Adonai Yeshua HaMashiach, the Spirit and the Bride, say, come soon, Lord Jesus Christ, come soon.